Hello, my name is Man in Yellow and this is Phobies. Phobies is a turn-based game played on a hexagon field where you summon a bunch of small units to fight for you. You can see some of the units out here. I call them units, but in game they are called fears and most people could just call them Phobies. I really like this game, which is why I plan on doing a, uh, a series where I create a new account and I go from the lowest league known as Heebie-Jeebies to the highest league known as some of all fears. Um, I won't make the intro any longer than this because I think it's better to just show you the gameplay. Um, I will click play in a second and then a intro will play. I will not talk over it so we, I will just see you in the tutorial instead. Open your eyes. Oh, come and see what's inside. You've been ready for a while. All you lacked was a guide. Greetings and confabulations. <laughs> I'm Whoopi, your trusted guide to all things ferocious. All right. As you might have gathered from that, the theme is kind of fear of phobies for this game. And this down here is Libby, he's the tutorial guy, so he will just walk us through the tutorial. Together we shall explore your deepest recesses and turn these freaky phobias into an army. Okay, they also call it phobies. Let's get back to that. I'm still gonna call them units. Phobies of yours. Phobies are fears made flesh. Guess how many you have? Oh, let's see. Whoa. <laughs> And they spawn a bunch of them. You'll be a natural at this. As you can see, my hat is full of tricks too. I should probably mention this before we go any further. I have climbed to the top rank before. I just wanted to do it with actual video on so that I could explain myself while doing it and kind of, you know, show people what I do. And what I, you shouldn't do, because a lot of people make mistakes in this game. And natural or not, they're coming for you. You need an attack plan. Select erratic, that weird-looking battery guy. Now mm. let's hit that freaky clown. I will also apologize for my microphone. It probably sounds terrible. I don't have a proper microphone with me right now. So this is just what I have. I still wanted to do the video though. Erratic hits like static. Is it lightning or bright? All phobies get two actions per turn. Hit that clown again. He deals bonus damage too. Mechanicals, which is why it's doing so much to this one and so little to the others. Erratic hurt them all, but that clown is too tough. Let's bring in some backup. Murderwing always wants a turn at that. So bring him closer and fly him onto that mental block. We're in range for this special attack. Let's turn that clown upside down. So for this tutorial, they're kind of just showing you like AOE attacks. You could see that it hit everyone and it's showing you that you can use special abilities and that every phobia has two actions every turn. Stuff like that. Just an intro to the very basics. Sheeping gas is great in a crowd, <laughs> but she needs to get in nice and close. So this one has a giant AOE attack. So it obviously set us up to win this very easily. <laughs> For the first bunch of fights, it's just 
like scenarios like this where you get to win for free or where you're playing against very easy AI because they're introducing you to the game. It wouldn't make sense to put you up against someone who is actually good at that point. When you finish a game, you'll earn rewards like these. But more on that later. Yeah, these are the three types of like currencies in the game. This is premium currency. This is for buying like the cheap packs, but you get like pretty much one off every day if you buy the cheapest one. And this is for upgrading your cards. You've been a strange... It's known as XP. Here's a special gift from me to you. Yay, he's giving us a free card. And everyone get this card. It's called Jarkin. It's really good, actually. So, <laughs> and then I still get that one for free. I love the voice actor for Libby, by the way. This, is, this guy is called Libby. I think I already mentioned that. Or he did himself. My Very good. Outclass yours this time. You'll need to be clever. Ready or not, here I come. Here he's going to show us that you can attack the heart instead of just going for the enemy phobies. Each player has a heart, and when you kill it, the player whose heart is dead loses the game. And these are panic points which deal damage to the heart hearts at the end of the turn if you have more of them than the opponent. To push your way through this one, sugar. Check out how weak my heart is. If you finish it off, all my phobies die too. You can yeah. reach my heart with a direct attack. But there's another way. <laughs> panic points. If yeah, the panic points. panic points. You can win a battle without firing a single sheet. The more Panic points you control, the more damage you do to my heart. Let's grab a trusty old murder ring. Yes, so the way that the panic points work is if you have more than, than of them than your opponent, you will deal damage to their heart. And if the opponent has one and I have two, I will deal damage equal to one panic point. So they kind of like cancel each other out. Here they are going to let us take all of the panic points so that we deal a bunch of damage to their heart at the end of the turn. And now they show us obstacles too. They, it's like the blocks that you cannot walk over unless you have flying. And Gravedigger is one of the two phobies that can destroy these blocks or create them and do either one. Very funny attack animation on sheep, sheeping gas, by the way. You control all three pads, finish this up with a bang. Use jar cannon to lob a shot straight to the heart. Sorry for skipping some of the dialogue, by the way. I'm used to like literally just spam clicking through this because I have re rolled an account before. So let's convert your learnings to submit to lock it in, and we'll see if you've got a win. And there they taught us to like in the turn. Just, oh, that's, that's very basic. Let's see what rewards that turn has brought you. You've earned XP, which does two things. It can be used to upgrade phobies. And earning XP will also win you jacks. And these jacks give the sweetest rewards. They say it's used for two things, but it's only used for actually upgrading your phobies. The thing with the jacks actually just happens automatically, and it gives you, like, free rewards every day. Let's so, the house of Jack. <laughs> Jack's a fun one, full of tricks. Earning Jacks can be quite the kick. Select a Jack. Don't be this is <laughs> essentially just loot boxes, but you get them for free. And here it's gonna give us sheep and gas. It always does for the first one. You've got upgrade cards for sheep and gas. <laughs> your future grows cloudy. This is your vault. Your vault. Is where all your phobies reside. You can upgrade them from here. Yeah, so this is your collection. They call it a vault, which is pretty cool because they have a keyhole for where you summon. But yeah, it's pretty much just your collection and where you upgrade them. And some XP to level up shaping gas. Select shaping gas. Pump her up. Making your phobies stronger is totally safe, clean fun. You need both the XP and the upgrade cards, as you said. So you can't just 
a greater phobia a million times because you will need both things. So you're not gonna have anyone with insane levels unless you spend money. So just play for very long. So here we get our first stress level phobia. So this is our first stress level reward. They're like a system where as you level up you get a bunch of units for free. It's one of the things that's actually really good about the game. Because most of the uh, stress level phobias are really good. They like kind of give you one of each thing that you need through the stress level so that no one ends up like lacking a specific type of thing. Just press play. And now you can see the lobby, like, this is where you will be going into battles and stuff like that from. And this is the async version, and then there's arena, which is like, uh, it's, it's time-based, basically. So you don't play one turn and then send it to your opponent, instead you just play a full game. I think they will also send us into an arena game in a second. They're gonna kill everything except the murder wing. Yes, it will. She has five health or something. Okay, 30. Basically nothing. I'm not talking as much. Or... Okay. Didn't realize you would be speaking now. I'm not going to be speaking as much for the first episode because, you know, Libby is giving the tutorial, so... If I just constantly speak, you won't be hearing half of it because Libby will also be speaking. Yeah, this is the thing I talked about before. Arena is like a live battle with turns like on timers. First one here, I don't even think it's on a timer though, because it's against Libby. So he's kind of just teaching you stuff still. As you can see, this is like the phobies that we own right now, and it's only five phobies, which is very little, but it's because we're still in the tutorial stage. So he's gonna make us click a phobia and put it out. And this is how you essentially play the game. You just take units out and put them on the board, and then you fight with your opponent's units until one player wins or loses. And you can kind of see the stats of everything. They explain that now for some reason, not earlier. I don't know why. So you have the health, the movement, the attack range, and damage, and its special ability, which is just more damage on an attack. Yeah, and then on the back side of the card they have like more ability info because some of the abilities are a bit more uh, like special. Some of them are, have a lot of text. And then you have the race for the uh, phobia. This one is on undead, which leeches health when it's attacking. So it's essentially healing itself through fighting. But uh, it can't be cured, which means if it's poisoned or anything like that, it's pretty much just gonna die or take the full poison damage. 
and there's nothing you can do about it. Put the card back and we'll say the spawning is only done once you choose where he should come. Here. Your three keys are spent, <laughs> leaving nothing for a rainy turn. Let us reconsider this murdering. Use the undo button to send him back. So here he's showing us that you can undo during your turn, turn so you can kind of like experiment with stuff rather than just having to do the correct turn instantly. Here it would have actually been better to not use the Razor Mouth because the point of using Razor Mouth is to save up more keys if you do it on turn one. But we don't really have any high keys units right now. Like our high keys, the sheaving gas, which isn't even that good right now. So. Save two keys for next turn. That could turn into something. Now submit your turn. It won't be turning into something big because we don't have anything big <laughs> at the moment. Once we are done with the tutorial, that will give us like a bunch of free phobies in the first pack. And you can also see that. Interesting. <laughs> now, hmm. why do you suppose you chose the attic? During the first turn, they like, oh, no, not the first turn, the first fight. For some reason, they don't even attack you most of the time. They just send a unit out here, which he could have attacked. Because you can actually attack when you summon units from the vault, as you can see here. You can just directly attack it and or go back. So we're just going to be able to kill this one for free because he, he didn't even attack our phobie or put it anywhere where it matters. So the first bunch of fights are very easy because they're not even they're not even playing the game essentially. So you just get to uh, roll over. Them. So there's not really much point in telling you why I'm doing this. I'm just killing his stuff because he's not even fighting back. It's only 500 health. We're just gonna send sheep out here. Since that's the, big, that's the biggest thing we can summon right now. Yes. Sometimes my touch is just a little bit uh, much. Here we're just gonna poison him. The attic's where it all lies rotted. This will kill the uh I don't even remember this one's name for some reason. You barely ever see this unit slam our head. Yeah. And then we will poison this for a bunch, so it would be very easy to kill next turn. And just take the other point and summon something. Like this. Just put the grave dig out there. Are you sure you want to submit anyone? It's okay if you don't. And the, it still does this during the uh, during the actual game. It it will like tell you that you have actions left. Of course not with not with Libby actually talking to you, but it says this still. So you know if you like forget forgotten a unit at the edge of a map or something, because so the maps get get very, very big or complicated at least. Like this is a small map, and there's also a big form of map. So how much health is this? Okay, only three hundred. Here's already a tip that I can tell you: you can summon the unit on on the top of your vault, and then they don't use any action. If I had instead like summoned it out here, it would have spent an action on moving. Instead, you can summon it here on top of the vault, and it will have two actions, which means you can shoot try twice with a range unit from here. So now we can actually kill this with just the sheeping gas hits. Don't think this is enough damage, but it doesn't really matter. It's a very easy opponent. We're just gonna run at them. And end the game as fast as possible because there's not really a lot to talk about here. Don't even think we can kill this on this specific turn, can we? No. Just gonna kill everything else soon. And 
and then on the next turn we will just kill his last phobia and and th this part of the tutorial will be over i think you will still face a couple like very easy opponents oh he's actually running away to extend the game that's kind of annoying even the ai does this <laughs> It's annoying when a player does it, but when the AI does it, it's like, why? And this is where we get our first uh, pack. I call it Vendy's pack because it's like a specific pack that will give you a bunch of phobies which are like it's like they have some groups that you can get and uh very tragic our timing couldn't be more magic meet your new supplier if you get like a bad starting pack i would actually recommend that you reroll the account to a better one because there are some there's some some of them which are a lot better than others So this is the starting pack, and if it's bad, I will reroll. It's not bad. This is one of the better luck packs. This is, I think, this is actually the good pack. So maybe I'll just go through the units to like kind of talk about them. But if you get a pack where you get a unit named Fish Tank and Stairmaster as your 7k and 5k, you should probably reroll because those units are not very good. So let's just, I will do them in order of uh, how much do they cost here. Yeah. The first unit is named Contortio. Contortio? I don't know how to pronounce that. It's just a very basic one drop with the undead tag on. Pretty good. The, all of the one keys are pretty much decent because you can use them to capture panic points and stuff like that. Um, you mostly want them to be two move. You pretty much want all of them to be two move because and they can capture the points easier. And we have K9000, which is just a very basic uh, two key also with like a lot of health. It's like a tanky mechanical unit, so you can't poison it. It's also a pretty decent unit actually. It's nothing special, but it's usable. Gesundheit, I think this is like, this is not a good phobia. I can't remember. I think this is, this means something in another in another language it's like it's usable but it's not very good in my opinion um it deals a lot of damage for its key cost but it's just very slow and very easy to kill it's probably the worst it's not even probably it's easily the worst unit in this pack the next up we have stabby stabby is really damn good it's one of the best phobias especially in small maps it's a uh, very slow you can see only one movement but it has two range and very very good stats for its cost uh, a lot of health and a lot of attack for just three piece and its special ability does damage to enemies that damage it so it can like it can help you with the level gaps because it deals damage to enemies and it's also just dealing a lot of damage automatically when enemies attack it and it's also dimensional which is i think this is the first time we see an actual dimensional unit when they die, they pull an enemy in and deal damage to them, equal to the attack you can see here. And then they take more poison or disease damage. In all actuality, the poison doesn't matter that much because you mostly just cure your dimensionals, but we can talk more about that later when we get actual healers and stuff like that to cure it. Anyway, this is very, very good, you know, that's why you want this pack. If you had gotten the other pack, you would have probably gotten one called Boom Angles here instead, which is also... A decent unit it's kind of the same thing but it's not quite as good as stabby is and we have a four keys we have primate nine which is a uh, it's like an undead mid-range unit which uh, can leap to enemies that it allows the it's a special ability that allows it to like jump an extra tile to attack so it's, it's essentially range but it has to go in a bit more which is it's pretty okay there's another unit which is like a smaller version of this 
I think it's actually the same in everything except the health is 650 to start. It's called Castle Vary and it's very, very good. Um, it costs only two keys, so you know, half the keys and you lose half the health. It's the other one is better, but this is also pretty decent. But Casuary is really, really good. I think Casuary is actually in the other pack, but the high cost units in the other pack is just very, very bad. Here we have Hero. This is a very good unit also. It's it's like used even in high rank matches, but not all the time. It's like a decent unit. Um, it's essentially just a very big tank with uh, two movement and two range, which is pretty good. And it has uh, what is called lobbing attacks. You can see the, the arrow kind of like lobs over, which means it can attack over obstacles and over over your own uh, over enemy units also and stuff like that. Whereas another unit with like line of sight attack, you can see the arrow just pointing. It wouldn't be attack, able to attack through units or over obstacles. So it's, that's a pretty, like, it's not a big deal, but it's pretty good to have and it can be really good on some maps. It's also mechanical, so you can't disease it, which is good for your bigger units. And we have Alligator, which you get instead of Fish Tank because you chose this pack. It's not just like a very tanky melee dude who deals like not very good damage, but decent-ish damage on his melee attacks. And then he has a big Gatorade ability on, a, on it's a Gator and it re regenerates. It essentially just heals 400 damage every turn, but it doesn't cure poison. It's the only type of heal that doesn't cure poison. It's when it's healing itself like this. It's like, it's not a great unit, but it's decent early game. It's a lot better than Fish Tank. Um, it's still used on some maps, a few maps later game, but there's like a smaller version of it you like more, generally speaking. So yeah, that was the starting pack, and that, that was one of the good packs, so you get that, just stick with it. Now you should make an alias. Don't want your foes knowing your real name, trust me. Hmm. So you can choose an avatar up here. And you can also pick a name for yourself, or you have to pick a name for yourself. Um, what are we gonna call this? Uh, let's see if this is taken. It's probably not taken. Great choice. Now that we've secured an alias, how will we secure your account by binding your email? People use things all the time. Their phones, their phobies, even their minds. Let's not have this happen to you. Let's bind your email. You can go to options and your account to manage your bound email contents. So it wants us to bind to the email, which I'm not going to be doing while doing the video. But uh, I'll do that afterwards because you get like 100 free coffee, I'm pretty sure. Which is, and you, it's also important so that you can actually recover your account. Not as important when I'm just doing, you know, a new account for fun. But uh, so smart to do. And here it's telling you that you can start a lot of the async battles, so you can have many of them going at the same time. You also get like a lot of XP from playing battles. It's the only way that you get XP actually. So, uh, the first couple of opponents that we get here are still going to be AI, but I'm going to pretend that we are playing against actual players and like go through top thought process of what I would do. Now you can see we have a lot more phobies to choose from because we opened that starter pack. Um, normally if Stabby is a really good opener on small maps, but in this map it's actually... Okay, don't interrupt me. Okay, as I was saying, Stabby is normally a very, very good opener because it's 
very tanky and it's hard to fight. But this is actually a very open map, so if this was against a real player, I would want to instead uh, summon something more mobile so that we can contest the panic points earlier on, which we are gonna do. Um, I'm just gonna summon a 1k actually. Let's end it down here. Actually, let's, let's do the contortio, contortio because we just got it instead of the razor mouth, even though they are very close to the same thing. Things like a 50 health and 10 attack difference or something. And then the undead tech. The Razor Mouth is just a monster. You submitted a turn, but this battle is different to the battle we had in the arena. Now you wait for your enemy to send a turn back when they're ready. These battles are more casual, give you time to think about your turn before submitting. The more battles you play, the more rewards you collect. I'd like to play 10 battles at once. And it's not a lot, by the way. You can have like 50 matches, I think, so. We will have more than 10 in this. Um, I do also plan on doing the actual, like, climb to the, what's it called, Summer Fall Fears League through async, because then I can actually explain myself while I'm doing stuff instead of just having to actually play quick and also think and explain in Arena. That's That would be a bit difficult, I think. I'm, I might do an Arena one at some point. If this is uh, if people like this kind of content, but I I don't know if I will. I'd probably rather do like actual strategy guides for the game. Your enemy moved first this time. Going second lets you see what they've done. Going second also means you start the battle with an extra key to even the odds. See to your vault. I feel you have something in there just stirring to get out. Okay, so on this map it's a bit easier to like contest. You will probably not even go to the point here, so we're just gonna send Stabby out here and probably not even summon a one key alongside it. There's not really any point to it. I think Stabby can defend fine on his, on his own. Don't know if, St if Stabby is actually he, but uh. And these battle, battles are just ready instantly because it's it's AI. So so here you can actually skip what the opponent is opponent is doing, but I won't do this doing the tutorial right now at least. Here we can see a phobia that we haven't actually seen. Called Maggie, and it's also a flyer and just a very basic unit. It's a monster, so no additional effects, and then just some health and attack. It's playable, but not not insanely good, to be honest. Uh, we're probably gonna just take a big unit out here. And then, if we put the Contorsio here, he would be able to hit it with. This one and this one, because this can go on top of the obstacle. So we're just going to put it here, where this one can't reach. So this won't die. A lot of people actually make the mistake of leaving their phobies in range, at least of the lower ranks. And then uh, your stuff just dies for free, which isn't good for obvious reasons. reasons. I'm not great at English, by the way. It's my second language. So sometime I... Fuck up while speaking. <laughs> I'll try my best not to, though. So here we're just gonna probably just gonna summon Primate Mine. Actually, maybe not. Can Primate Mine kill this? Yeah, he can. So it's not a problem. So like, if th if this for some reason flies onto here, we can leap onto it and attack it, and it's it's gonna die. It's fine to put in here. And this one obviously isn't really a threat at all. This is probably just going to move on top of one of the obstacles and sit to protect, like, protect the top points. But we don't really care because it's pretty bad. It's just a slightly larger version of the Gesundheit. It's not very good, in my opinion. Some people still like it.
maybe we start getting upgrades for some of the other units for murder wing for example which is a very good unit and you also get like free jacks every now and again down here it's one for grave digger grave digger is also very good i should actually talk about the the units that weren't on the pack so you also just have a few units that you always start with Here's a Razor Mouth, which is like the Stressful Phobia. It's just a very basic one drop, too. You can like compare it to this one. It's basically the same thing. Like Contortio has 10 more attack and 50 less health, but has Undead. And it's just a monster with no effects, but just decent stats. Then we have Jar Cannon, which is the unit that he gave us for free. It's a mechanical, which doesn't matter most of the time because it's just so low health that. If it's hit by anything, it's gonna die probably. But uh, it's actually a really good unit because it has three range and lobbing, so you can like you can like poke at your opponent from far away without them getting to you, which is pretty busted. Even though it doesn't deal a lot of damage, but you can just kind of force your opponent to interact with you by slowly chipping away at their health. So it's like an inevitability fact, I guess. It's uh, pretty good, and it's also mobile, it has two movement. Then we have Murder Wing, which is another starting phobia, and it's also really good. It's good because, well, for one, it can kill Jar Cannon, which is what it's going to be used for a lot in the start. But secondly, it's also just a very good basic unit. It has flying, like decent-ish health for how much mobility and other stuff it gets. It's not that great damage, but it's fine, because it has Monty, which is very good damage. Um, and it's also undead, as you saw before. Which means it can like sustain through stuff. Then we have the Gravedigger, which you also start with. Which is... This has a lot more text than the other ones, but it's basically just that it can create and destroy obstacles. That's, that's all he does, other than that he's just a very basic fighting unit. But the ability to actually create and destroy obstacles is very, very good. It's like... Kind of broken, really. Like, he is easily an ATA unit in my opinion. He's very, very good. Same thing goes for these two. So we get some very good starting focus actually. Then we have Sheep and Gas, which we already upgraded from before. This is like, it's a lot less good because Poison kind of becomes ir 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 irrelevant in the late game to a certain degree at least. Because you can kind of just heal it with other units to like cure the poison so that it doesn't matter at all. Um, that it can still be used against undeads because they cannot be healed, but it's it's not that good and it's also hard to connect with because you have to go into melee with it. So it's not all that good. And then the last like starting phobia that you don't get from a pack is erratic. Which is like it's decent but it's it's very immobile for six K, so it, it's kind of hard to connect at times, at least if your opponents opponents are good at the game, then it will become hard to connect with people without like using other units to help him, con help him connect with them so he can kind of be like kited like you can hit him and then run away and then hit him and run away and then he will just kind of lose fights but in a one-on-one -on -one fight he's actually very good you can see he has like this uh, lightning symbol with plus 300 here which is uh, electrical damage you can see like right here electricity which still deals bonus damage to mechanical units, which are, you know, units like Hevo, which cannot be poisoned, but they, they take bonus damage from the electricals. And you can see there's like a bunch of like points here, and then the 50%, which is, which means it does, it's doing AOE damage. You can also see it on the little sign here on top of the attack damage. Uh, there's like an AOE sign. So it, it's doing 50% damage to your units around it. When it's attacking like two enemy units around the one you're attacking it's it's like it's can it can be used to counter some slow electrical or just slow units but it's it's not very good once you get like further into the game but he's usable at least um he's also on there so he can heal a lot with the aoe attacks with if the opponent groups up for some stupid reason um yeah he's usable but not not good. They also have like flavor text on the bottom, something like I'm at I'm at capacity, and I think there's also he heave ho to the grave you go, 
just to call him Tim can hits it like really hates it stuff like that on a lot of the units that's pretty funny but yeah let's just go into some more matches see what he does here I might start skipping ahead instead of viewing the actual moves that they do here yeah, because otherwise this is going to take a very long time it's not exactly moving quickly so he saved five keys here so Probably something big that will come out, is what I guess. And here we're probably just gonna kill kill this, and also this probably, if we can, we easily can actually. Actually, what is Mudderwing's starting attack? I think we can do this in a better way. I think we fly this out here and hit this, and then this one will have. 350 and 250 so we get to like keep the Monty instead of using it while doing the same things so this looks pretty good now this is an AI opponent so it's not playing very well but you can already see it's three keys behind because he just went in without being able to actually kill any of my stuff you don't want to do that if you're playing against an actual player you want to make sure that when you go into your opponent you actually kill things at least do something that will help you because if you don't kill them maybe they will heal them or they will get to hit you back and like if you're walking it if you're walking and you use one movement to one of your move to move in and then you attack so then you're you're kind of like you're, you're already spending one of your moves so you're one move behind when your opponent gets to attack you twice so they kind of like the the defensive counter is a lot more powerful than than the uh, than than actually walking in to your opponent. It's like if I run into my opponent right here and attack them, I would deal like 400 damage, and then they will strike me back for like a lot and kill my actual unit. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to like either stand all the way outside of your opponent's range right out here, or like threaten them by moving in. Where they can't quite hit you, hit you, but are forced to move one movement forward and then hit you, because then you get to attack twice into them. Um, let's see what are we gonna summon here. This one is also a leap unit. You can see the leap symbol is the same symbol for all of the leaping units. It's like a little guy leaping, but it's only one movement, so it can actually only reach here. So we can put murdering here, and it's not in danger at all. It can be hit by this for 550 damage, but it's then it's gonna heal up a bunch because it has undead from striking it back and killing it. So that would be perfectly fine by us for us if he does that. And we are not gonna move this tabby forward because then he would get to hit it twice, which we don't like. I'm gonna skip here. So we just summon the a spot which is like a small lobbing unit is essentially a very small unit of version of Hebo, except it doesn't have mechanical. It's just a monster instead. So here we're gonna attack, and you can see we're gonna heal a bunch from attacking. Pretty good. And then we're just gonna. We can't actually just run to this, can we? No, it's just out of range. We have to die yeah, to. Which is. That kind of sucks. It's like a buff with just a bit of health. But that's. It's fine, I guess. Actually, that's annoying again. Now we have to use the Monty anyway. Do we want to do this this way? Don't know if I want to do this this way. How much health would this have? It doesn't actually matter because he's not a very good opponent, so we could kind of just run in at him if we wanted to do that. But, like, I'm going to pretend that he's a player. So. Yeah. We're gonna play this properly and we're gonna recapture this point because he can't even kill this. He can only kill this and if he does that his spot will die. So that would be just fine for us. Um and then we're just gonna summon some units. I mean we're just gonna summon a two. Okay. So then next turn we can summon uh Primate Nine to fight for us. Or we can even save up for the alligator if we wanna skip another turn. Which we probably don't against a an AI opponent. But still. So we are just kind of gonna go through the first bunch of 
couple games here against the AI opponent, which should be pretty fast. He didn't even move this in, so this is looking very easy for us. Did he even hit anything? I don't think he hit anything. And he literally just walked up close to die. So we're just gonna murder everything here, I think. Like, quite literally. How much health is this? We can't just one can shot it. It's not quite at that point. Do we even need to use the leap here? I don't think we do. Okay, clearly it fucked up somewhere. How much health is this? Oh, it's just out of range. We're just gonna summon something to hit it. Like the jar cannon. So hit right here. Again, we are saving the Monty so that we can make sure we can kill this if it's moving forward. You want to like save your abilities if possible, but of course use them if it's going to give you a major advantage in some way. So we're going to place it here. It can be hit by both of the, these, but it won't die if he does that. It will just be 1050 damage, so it will have 300 health left and then it can leap onto stuff and kill it. So that would be just fine by us. And we're also threatening the top unit here with our jar cannon because it has, has the three range. He's probably just gonna double hit this and summon some garbage unit. Yeah, no way, bully. This is not that bad a unit, but it's it's not that good either. Melee units are kind of not as good unless they like have some spe uh, specific thing that makes them good. Because, uh, like, if a, if a melee unit moves up, ha has to go into range of you, you kind of just get to hit it twice, right? And if a range unit goes up into range of you, and you're a melee unit, you have to move in and attack them. So then you're trading one hit for one hit, which isn't the... Uh, that's not what you want to do. It's hard to explain, but... Uh, yeah, basically, melee units aren't that good on this... They're capable of doing something cool. To upgrade some bogeys. Yeah, we also had that before. We are going to uh, upgrade the Murder Wing. This is, this is a really good unit. It's probably the best unit we have right now. Either that or the Jar Cannon. Both are very good. The Grape Digger is also very good, but it doesn't really need to be upgraded as much because it can just uh, destroy obstacles. That's, that's his thing to do. So doesn't matter as much if he has a lot of health or not. Of course it helps to upgrade him still because then he can survive stuff easier. He did the expected thing where he just moved in and hit us twice. So we are just going to leap onto this and kill it. How much of okay, this should still be dead. We're just going to kill everything here, essentially. And then we will move this down close to end the game faster. And should we summon this? I think I just wanna... Mm, not like it really matters, but I'm just gonna summon a one piece, so... Then we can could summon Hero if this was someone actually capable of playing the game. The AI is very easy in this game, by the way. Even like, you can like go into a challenges and challenge the AI, I think. But even that's very easy to beat. Okay, it doesn't let us do that quite yet, but I would show you, but it won't let me. But you can like play against AI opponents also, which are not good. You also don't get rewards for it, so that's not. Not that much reason to do so, but still. But that doesn't kill. Guess we shouldn't use it then. Just use Hero to hit it instead. And then we're gonna threaten the Jar Cannon by just placing this next to it. Uh, let's just summon Great Bigger. Not for any particular reason. Gonna end it like one or two turns, so. Doesn't really matter what we put out there, or even if we put anything out there. But still. 
we are just gonna keep on hitting with this uh, Primate Mine so that he can heal up. Um, how much attack is this? Okay, this can kill the thing if we go there. So we're just gonna do this instead. So this is smart. Don't know if this is smart. Hmm. I'm still pretending that this is an actual game. Can this kill me? 375. H2. Yeah, good. I moved here. Yeah. I'm just gonna hit it and probably move one back on. Then we're gonna move the stabby up so that we can actually hit stuff. It would have probably been better to not even summon this one key and just save for the hero if, the, if the, you know. It was an actual game, but it's not. So it doesn't really matter. Wow, that's a lot of small garbage units to suddenly throw out there. You can hit this with this, right? Yeah, but it doesn't kill us like just a bit off. This should go well. The uh, Primate 9 and Cassowary will kill Jar Cannon if they're even level. It's like 5 damage over, I think. So, we are just going to do this. Let's just break an obstacle for fun. And then hit here. As you can see, this is why the Gesundheit is not very good, because you just hit it with two things and it's dead. And it's not even high damage things, like they are focus that can kill it in one hit in the game, especially if they are over leveled, so it's not a very good unit because of that, but it can hit for a lot if you get too close, and you can jump again I think, yeah. I think we are actually killing him here quite easily, actually, he's very dead. And hit the hard ones. And right now we're only going to be playing on small maps, which will be the, the thing we're playing on for a while, but eventually we will be unlocking the larger maps too. But we need like a lot more stress levels and stuff for that. Is progress made. <laughs> Let's finish up your other battle while I scare up something special for you. I don't actually remember what he's <laughs> Okay, I wanted to go to the rankings, but apparently it won't let me. Just gonna skip again because he only has one phobia and one hit. So, 25 damage and it's gone. So, alright, oh he's gonna show us how to open the tier peg in a second, and we're gonna get a, a new phobia. That's what he was talking about. Exciting, all those tears pouring in. Looks like you have enough to trade them in. Let's turn those tears into. A visit to Vendy is in order. I actually did this thing before where I also created a new account and climbed, climbed to the uh, to some of all fears, but uh, there I got a very good phobie as the first one, so I just uh, I only leveled to level 10 and then I just challenged myself to try and hit some of all fears with it, but uh, we probably won't get one that's that good this time. So I will just be opening packs like normal, like any player would, instead of doing some weird challenge. All card packs contain scratch cards, which may unveil new phobies. More expensive packs get you more upgrade cards and better chances at finding new and more rare phobies. That an easy pack is a great start. Snatch it up. The first time you open a pack, you get a new phobie guaranteed, by the way. So you want to open one of each. Um, we are probably going to be saving up for the highest cost coffee uh, pack because in that you are guaranteed to get like the highest rarity of phobie. And this is a terrible phobie. This is the one I was talking about that you didn't want. So, <laughs> uh, he's going to keep on mentioning that for a while. And 
and there we get like a little boosting coffee to start off with. Yeah, he's pretty funny. So this is this is the unit I was talking about. You don't want in your starting pack, because this is the alternative to uh, to the alligator, and it's not very good. Even if the attack looks big, it doesn't heal itself. It's mechanical, so it, like dies to erratic early game when you're fighting it. It's just it's not a good unit. It's like one of the worst units in the game, in my opinion. But uh, we're just gonna ignore that and keep on playing anyway. It doesn't really matter. Like, it's of course very good if you get one of the uh, the powerful phobies in your first couple packs, but we're just going to be opening a bunch of pack while, packs while we are climbing anyway. We are getting a lot of jar cannon upgrades here. That's kind of wild. We will upgrade it. So it's uh, very good, like I said before. I should probably have shown you that you can multi-upgrade stuff. I don't know if I have enough cards for anyone to show you that. I should actually still have enough cards here, so you can see you can upgrade multiple times. Yeah, but I don't have the XP, so it would take coffee, and you do not want to spend coffee on upgrading cards. At least not in my opinion. It's not a good idea. But this is it's very important to upgrade your jar cannon, because uh, then you will get out of range of the opponent's jar, or the opponent's uh, murder wing it's called, or any other unit that might try to kill it, so you can see Level more, one murder wing would have 450 attack with its special ability. So if I upgrade it to uh, to level four, it would have enough health to survive that. If you have that, you are very very annoying to play against for the other player. So I think this this might be a first match in which we can get actual opponents. I don't know for like how long they get you get AI opponents for, but. Again, we're gonna pretend this is a normal player, no matter what. So on this map, this is in rotation map, one of the maps in rotation, so that's why I'm assuming it's a actual player that we are gonna see. This map, I almost always wanna open Grave Digger. Even on my other account where I have a lot more options, I open Grave Digger here. Because otherwise you only have like this tiny hole to go out onto the uh, onto the field on, and it's not very good, you want the uh, one space and it's also just very good because like imagine that your opponent doesn't go grave digger you can put a block here and they can't get to the board at all it's very annoying if you do that but it's of course in cooldown right now it's two turns cooldown so we're not going to be able to do that but we're, we're breaking the block down here so we can march stabby down towards the panic point down there kind of take control of the board through through that this is almost certainly a bot i think I think I remember this name being a bot. Yeah, it's certainly a bot. It just put a unit on fire. That's <laughs> that's quite something. Okay. So this is going to take 200 fire damage. It's going to have 1,200... No, 1,150 health left. Um. Honestly, honestly, I still like going Grave Digger first, even on this, but... We are going to do something else here, I think, just for the fun of it. Um, I wonder if he will run into a tag range. Actually, I lied. I'm just going to do, do the Grave Digger still. It's very good to get stuff online early. Okay. Oh, let's just do Stabby. Stabby is fine too. Just do something different, I guess. Even though Grave Digger is good on pretty much every map. He's <laughs> very good at opening the map with... So a turret's like Stabby and Bomb Angles there, but I just really like Great Take after that stuff. So here we're just gonna put out the uh, the Stabby, like I said, because it's a very good early game. And I think we're gonna actually just take this point without any real risk, because like imagine he flies in here and attacks us. Actually, he can stand here and attack us, which would be bad. We're gonna put it here, I think. Then we can walk up and kill it if he goes in. For some reason, which a normal player wouldn't wouldn't do, but again, this is AI. I'm pretty sure. A ba a Bacchus. I'm pretty sure that's a, uh, a AI name. So, ooh, 
that's actually kind of scary. It's a poison unit. You can poison our stabby. And we don't have a healer yet, so that would be a bit bad. Um, nothing we can really do about it, to be honest. So um, I think we are just going to... What are we going to do, actually? This is 600 damage, so we can put murder in here. Maybe even number one alongside them. Let's see, this can kill this, right? Oh, it actually can't. Hmm. We're gonna put the undead one here. Maybe he will attack the undead one instead. One can hope. Because that should be uh, enough damage that he can actually kill that anyway. We're kind of trying to make him attack that so we don't get poisoned. And here he went in, and again, it's on AI. It put its put its unit on the lava pit. Don't do that. It takes damage. So yeah, that's kind of stupid to do. Actually, we can hit this unit instead. Doesn't really make a difference, does it? Actually, yeah, it's a bit more damage. So it's better to hit that one. And this is gonna die because the lava triggers at the end of every turn. So it's taking 200 damage. Um, we are gonna save a couple of keys so that we can get something big out because he is also saving up keys. So like say he goes erratic we can sheep and gas it to deal a bunch of damage to it or something. Or go uh, another big unit for ourselves so that we can fight. You normally want to do that by the way. If the opponent is, opponent is saving a lot of keys you should also be saving a lot of keys. If possible, of course. And again, he's th just throwing his units onto lava. And our uh, Stabit did get poisoned. Luckily, it's very small poison, so it's not really a big deal, but still kind of annoying. And we can actually kill this now because it attacked our Stabby, so it's taking damage from the uh, its voodoo effect that deals damage back. And this, this is why Stabby is so good. Because like normally this would not be able to kill this. It would be 30, 30 damage off. But because it took the uh, the return damage from its voodoo, we can just double hit it like this and kill it. Very, very, very good for us. And then we can just kill this, actually. We can even kill this one up here, actually, with a, uh, with a jack cannon hit. And just hit it like this, and it dies to the lava. Not even sure if there's any point to that, actually, but... Whatever, because it's an AI. <laughs> it will probably just a captain and lava run over here or something. Or whatever. I'm gonna skip it again. So we pulled that one back and put a. What's this even called? Eternal Knight onto the board. Um, this is like another one of the starting units in the other pack, I think. It's a dim dimensional with a bunch of. Uh, attack damage, but I don't think this is very good either. I like the one key dimensionals, but not the two key ones. We are going to box them in here. We can't place it right here because we can't kill this, but that's fine. And we're just gonna move the stabby up because he can't fight the stabby or Well, he can, but he doesn't want to. Because he will lose that fight. And he has seven keys saved up. So maybe we should save two, to be honest. But I don't really want either of these, I don't think. We might actually use the fish, fish tank here, just for fun. Um, I'm gonna send out a one key, because then we still, we'll still have enough for either of the seven keys next turn, with the three keys we get. So, this is just another fighter. You can kind of like sacrifice it for whatever. Just to keep up our, our tempo on the board. You probably attack this, right? Yeah. We get to double attack him back to heal a bit. And we will move the stabby up to fight, actually. And we move the jar up so that it's in range of this. And we move this onto here so we have some panic points. And then um, we didn't end up using the grave deck, actually. I'm just gonna send out another one key to, to fight. And then we can like save up for like as one of the higher keys, I guess. I should maybe have sent the two a drop out instead, actually. But uh, it's fine. Like the K9000, that's 
it's, we are fine without it. It's it's an AI match. Uh, um, I think we are just gonna take a bunch of points like this and actually just let the dimensional pull here because you know the dimensionals pull you in we can use the pull here to pull our own unit in and then hit his unit kind of like a puzzler thing but used in puzzles at least and then I guess we will just summon alligator I'm not gonna summon the fish tank here because like Imagine that this guy, for some reason, goes erratic and, and it's actually hard to win, even though it's a terrible AI opponent. Probably not hard, but it's harder. So, we're just gonna go with the basic alligator that doesn't really get countered by anything. Specific, at least. And again, he's like sending units into, units into the lava over here. It's kind of stupid. This is uh, the next stress level phobia that you get, by the way. Called Jinsting, and its special ability or its active ability is a, uh, a AOE attack that deals a bit more damage to the main target too. It's called Bees. I love it. Very funny unit. At least the like the theme is very basic, I guess, but still very fun unit in my opinion. We are going to hit hit this again to heal some more. Let's see, does this actually die if we hit it with the jar? No, it's 4 damage off dying. We are just going to hit the gin sting then, I think. Like, just hit it there and then throw this up here. We don't want to place it here. Actually, we can place it here. Normally, you didn't want to place it here because you would get hit by the AoE attack. Actually, we're... this is better to place it like this. So that the jar cannon doesn't get hit by something with two movement and two attack here. But um, like it doesn't really matter that this gets hit by the AOT AOE attack because like for one we want it to die so that we can summon something powerful next turn. But it's also going to be able to heal the, the damage anyway because it's an undead. It's fine to place in the AOE attack. Shouldn't really matter. Okay, and this game is pretty over already, as you can see. He is dying very quickly. We are just going to kill his units. And I don't think this kills the jar cannon, but whatever. Doesn't really matter. I'm not even gonna like summon anything, it's fine. He's still saving up 7 keys for some reason. He's gonna die before he uses the keys, I'm sure. And now we can start another match actually. Let's just open the remaining uh, jacks here. We got a fish tank. We don't want that. <laughs> Terrible god. You kind of like you will still use some of the bad guards at times, like given the right situations. But whatever. So okay. So normally you would uh, have to pay for the daily double jacks with uh, with coffee. But uh, the first time I think he gives you... I think it's given for free, like, on your first day. Yeah. So here we just get one for free. And then you can see, and that's daily double active and all of this, uh, these jacks become... Like, you can get them again. Don't know what to call it. They become active, I guess. Alright. Did anything die? Yeah, they did. So now we can summon another big unit. We're just gonna be using Alligator a lot, I guess. As the big unit guy. So let's hit it with this. Oh, that's not even good. So I guess we are not doing that. We're just gonna hit his heart a bunch. Maybe put one down here. We want this to die at this point so we can get something else out. 
but it's an AI opponent, so he's not even killing it. We finally spent some of his keys, but it's pretty pretty much too late. He, w he wouldn't win anyway, but still. Don't save your keys for this long. We're just gonna hit the heart with the alligator actually. Then he will uh he will die on his own turn. I'm pretty sure. Right, yeah. We'll take sixteen hundred damage in total. Let's put that red egg out here just so you can see it. Kind of a cool intro animation. Some of them have really cool intro animations. Some of them are just like dropping in. Like he's just dropping in, for example. Don't think Jarkin has one either. Anyway, you can see this guy has a bunch of electric stuff, which fits. He also have, has electricity when you move. So yeah, this game is literally over when he passes his next turn. So this game is going to be over soon too. Oh, that's the Casuary. This is the one I was talking about. It's similar to the uh, Primate Mine. Just less health for another key cost, lower key cost. Let's put it over here. Just summon this because it can attack the heart next turn. We can just end the game at this point. The first like bunch of matches aren't gonna be very exciting and there's not that much to explain because you know as you can see the AI is not very good in this game. They kind of I kind of want them to add like an impossible or at least hard AI. That would be uh that would be kind of funny to play against and see if you can win. Or just one with very high levels, maybe. So yeah, when you win games, you actually just get 300 tiers and 5 coffee, no matter what. Um, if you lose games, I think the maximum you get is like 240 or something for the tiers. And I don't remember the coffee, but it's a bit less. So you want to be winning games. But you can, of course, also just play a lot of games and get stuff anyway. So it's not like you need to win games to advance. Here we're just gonna kill their heart and the game. So that we can start having AI opponents soon. I will uh, probably end the first episode here. I will still play more today and like record the second episode so that we can get all of the jacks. But um, let's just uh, cut it down here so it's not too long. It's already pretty long, I'm sure. And uh, it's pretty boring in the start, so there's no reason to make them too long. Then it's just extremely boring.